Euro 2020 show Soyesh, Yael Hamis. Welcome to the show, guys. What's with the little shocked look? <laughs> I, I guess Ash is speaking Spanish because we're going to be looking at Italy, Spain today in the first semi final of Euro Westall. 2020. Big one coming up, eh? Absolutely. And you're excited, I can tell. You've got the Three Lions jersey on today. For the big game, you guys made it to the semi finals, guys. It's coming home. Well, we've only ever made it. This is the third time and we've never made a final of the European Championships. So this is a big one for us. And who better to talk about England in the semi-finals than Darren Anderton, one of my personal heroes, Spurs legend, England legend, Euro 1996 semi-finalist. will be here talking us through the semi-finals and what it feels like to represent England Fantastic in a European stuff. Championship final. Looking forward to that. We also have Delwinder Singh from Tanjung Pagar United and the SPL joining us in the studio to talk fantasy football. And we're going to be giving away not Ooh. one, but two shirts on the show today from European Championship legends Giorgio Cialini and Miroslav Klosa. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys, let's go. Si puedes, vamos! Hey, welcome back. And we've got a great show to you today looking at the semi finals. But before we get to the semi-finals, how did the teams get here? So here's the games from the weekend. We see Spain, Italy, Denmark, and England winning through to get to the next stage. How did our predictions go though, Ash? Oh, it's been really interesting. I think we had on the table right here, three of our pundits, including James, got all four predictions right. Great stuff, James. Uh, we see Lionel as well and um, Durich. Durich. Four out of four guys, well done. I have to say that the one that um, really was a bit tricky was, uh, really caught my eye was, was him. He yeah, Sassi going for Switzerland was a, was a little bit out there. Interesting, right? I, I should just point out before Alex gets too cocky here that he got four out of four here. He only got, f what, three out of eight, right, in the quarterfinals. Uh, so he's actually in the round of 16. So he's done better in the quarterfinals he's catching up there, than he yes, did in yeah. the round of 16. So, okay, good predictions. And that has led us to our semifinals. Both being held at Wembley. The first one is tonight, the next one is tomorrow. And if we're going to talk about a European Championship semi-final, well, who better to talk about than a player who's played in a European Championship semi-final at Wembley and representing England? We have none other than Darren Anderson. Hey, Darren, how are you doing tonight? How are you doing? Very good, very good. Good, <laughs> good. good you're, morning. You're in California, yeah? Yes, I am. Uh, very early in the morning here. 7 a.m. So, um, <laughs> another nice day out there, though. Ah, Again, beautiful. up pretty early recently, anyway. So this is no yeah, problem. Yeah, I, I, I hear congratulations are in order. You have a, a baby boy, yeah? Yeah, baby boy Jack. Uh, it's going to be two two months later this week. Um, wow. Loving it. Wow. Zero congratulations. Sleep. <laughs> Zero golf, but uh, at least I'm able to watch all the football that's going on. I was about to say, keep, keep a good excuse to be awake in the middle of the night to watch the football. Exactly. Is, is, is that Jack as in Jack Grealish? Or... Ah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who isn't loving Jack Grealish at the moment? Oh, fair enough, fair enough. So, on to the football, Darren. That's right. Let's, let's talk about the last Italy game, of course. There was a little bit of show... I wouldn't say a little bit of uh, acting on Italy's part, Darren. If you saw Immobile in, on the floor, you know, he was rolling about. If you saw that clip, what do you make of that? Uh, is it the Italians just being pretentious as they are? It's just the way that they... Yeah. I feel like Italians and, you know, I think a lot of the foreign teams, they play a certain way, which is to win at all costs and um, to get free kicks, to get players, other players booked, sent off. It, it's within their makeup. That's something they've always done. So I think whenever, when I came into international football, that was the biggest, the hardest thing to get used to was that that would happen and you had to accept that you had to uh, not retaliate. Um, so, but... The question being, you know, what do I think of it? I think it's a disgrace and that it shouldn't happen. <laughs> and when it does, um, something should be done about it. I mean, something's done about everything, it seems, these days via video technology and VAR and everything else and retrospective action on so many things that really, it's, it's, it's cheating. It's a, it, it should be, it, and it should be taken out of the game. And the only way you take it out of the game is by uh, punishing people that do it. But I think it, it, it maybe distracted a little bit from what was a very solid 
Italian performance. We said for weeks beforehand here on the show, we've been saying they look good, but they've never really played anyone. Well, now yeah. they've played the number one team, ranked team yeah. in the world. And, and particularly at the back, they look very solid. Yeah, and they always have done. I mean, Chiellini and Bonucci, I mean, that's what they do there. I mean, how old are they? You know, I mean, Chiellini <laughs> yeah, exactly, is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I, he's a sort of player you'd hate to play against. And a lot of defenders these days just want to get on the ball and look good and not 50 yard passes mm -hmm. and have time. Not, not, not many of them actually like to defend, whereas he, Chiellini just loves to defend. Italy love to defend. They have pride in that. And um, that, that is obviously where you build a team from, a team that can go on and win a, a tournament. On top of that, they have this, you know, this wonderful t attacking team as well that, that has taken everyone by surprise that in the manner of and the style of football that they're playing. And it's great to see, uh, you have to say, I mean, we we're talking about Immobile, you know, what he did and cheating and diving and all that. What a player he is and how well he has played in the tournament. So, um, for me, they've been the standout team, probably. Of course, we all, we're all loving what England are doing, um, especially the last couple of games and everything else. But this is, this is some Italian team. Now, speaking of the Italian team, Spinat Zola, he had an injury and he limped off of that game. So he's out of that semi-final game. Darren, do you think Italy are really going to regret, you know, this, um, this loss, this player? I think they're going to miss him. I think he's been outstanding. Uh, breath of fresh air, the way he plays the game. You have to feel for him, of course, to pick up such a, you know, a terrible injury, uh, especially as a, he's a player who has struggled with, with injuries in the past. And you could tell um, how the, his teammates felt and everyone felt um, when this happened. And it's something you never like to see in football, although it's unfortunately it's something that is a huge part of the game. Injuries do, do occur. Um, the pace of the game is incredible. And you, as a squad, you have to move on, but they'll probably use that as as a reason to go on and, and win the tournament for him, um, which would obviously be great great for them. All I can say is I feel, feel for him. I think he's been outstanding. I think Italy will be able to deal with it as a team, as a squad, uh, I'm sure whoever comes in will do, do a good job and continue their, their unbelievable run that they're on. So just looking at Belgium, of course, um, Belgium now out of the tournament. Uh, and again, we've talked a lot over the years about this golden generation. And, and while some of the attacking players, De Bruyne and obviously Doku's coming through uh, are younger players, but particularly that defence, the, the, the Toby Alderweireld, Jan Vertonghen, Thomas Vermaelen defence, it, it feels like this is kind of their last mm. hurrah. I mean, what, what would be your takeaways for this Belgium team and this golden generation? Well, I think they've underachieved um, and there's a real opportunity for them to have won a tournament. Um, of course, you know, they've come up against a really good Italy team. Uh, mm. The World Cup, you know, they had a good run. But like you said, those players are aging. I mean, I, I've obviously seen firsthand, you know, Toby and Jan at Tottenham. And, you know, Jan's now moved on, you know, felt like he, he was past his best. Um, Toby, arguably getting past his best as well at Premier League level. So international level, you probably think that this, is their, this was their last big chance. Because um, to win a tournament, you've got to be defensively very, very good, um, which is what we're seeing from from these teams now, England included. So um, they're, they're still fantastic to watch. I mean, who doesn't watch love watch Kevin De Bruyne and just love it? And you can't turn the TV off. You can't walk out of the room. <laughs> Different class. Eden Hazard over the years. I mean, so much talent going forward. Lukaku is, you know, one of the best centre forwards in the world. They came up. They, they came came up against a really good Italian team, and you'd have to say it's Italy deserved the win on, on the night. So, um, but for Belgium, you'd have to say it's going to be a bit of a rebuilding process now. So, so we asked the question last week. Viewers will remember about what Lukaku was saying to Ronaldo, and I think we we got our answer. <laughs> yeah. I'll join you on the next plane home. Might have been the answer, but but <laughs> Ash, who, Italy up against Spain? Yeah, absolutely. Your Spain. Not my Spain. Well, of course, Spain in the last game against Switzerland, I'm sure, Darren, you watched it all the way down to penalties. So many missed chances as well in front of goal. What do you make of that? Do you think the Spanish side were a little bit lucky in that sense? 
Yeah, they were. I mean, got to say that you know they were pretty comfortable when they were leading in the game, and Switzerland got a got a goal off of a bit of a bad bounce for for Spain defensively. Um, it was a very tight game. Once you go to penalties, anything can happen. Of course, Spain missed their first penalty, and it again looking great for Switzerland. And then, <laughs> you know, they kind of they collapsed. Their penalties were not good, and so Spain go through. And Spain have been, but they always play great football. Yeah, you know that's the way that they they've done it in the past. I don't think they have the quality of player that they had for the previous World Cups and Euros, which they won. But the, here they are in the semi-finals. They they're used to it. Busquets coming back into the team has obviously been huge for them. Uh, a, a winner, uh, an unbelievable footballer. So that's why they are where they are now. But when you look at it, I mean, I think four out of the five games after 90 minutes, they they drew them all. So yes, they're playing some nice stuff, but they're not putting teams away. Now that could happen against Italy where everything goes right for them. But you'd have to say, if they play in the same manner, Italy will probably have too much for them going forward the other way because... Uh, they are ruthless and that's what they do and defensively they are very good so it, i think this is such a good semi-final a, a proper proper game i mean it, two great teams two classic nations um it's going to be a massive one and it's a difficult one to to call but i think if i had to i'd probably be going with italy so uh, we've seen a little bit online this week of Spain looking around frantically to find another striker, striker and <laughs> a little bit of humour at Morata's expense there. But, but Darren, so, so where do you think this game will be won or lost? What's going to be, the, who's be the key player? Well, there's so many top, top players, aren't there? I think that uh, you'd have to say that the Italian boys going forward a different class and Mobley's been class insignate. I mean, those two for me have been unreal. Who's going to dominate midfield? Busquets, different class. Um, I, I love Verratti. I think he's he's a player who is unreal, an unreal talent. I think almost underrated. I think he's mm. always involved in the big, big games, always plays well, always dominates games. So I think that the, whoever dominates midfield will probably go on and win this game. And both teams like to pass the ball correctly. I think Italy a little bit more direct. And I think that might be the difference in the end. So Italy for the final, and then who will they be up against, right? We have England and we have Denmark. Denmark. So maybe to start with, let's look at Denmark before we get a, a little bit too <laughs> nationalistic here. Um, that Denmark performance against Czech Republic, what, what most impressed you about that? Everything. I think they've been different class. I mean, the character they've showed is, of course, unreal. And, you know, what happens to Christian Eriksen, we all watched, and it's one of the hardest things ever watched uh, in sport or in, on TV or in, in life. Um, so the biggest takeaway from this tournament, the biggest success is that Christian Eriksen is, is going to be OK. So um, Denmark won, lost their first two games and are now here in the semi-final and they've been a joy to watch. Um, the the game that they won, they need to win by two, two goals and they won 4-1. I mean, unbelievable. And then they've gone from strength to strength. You've got to say um, Goldberg, I mean, scoring goals, uh, they look full of confidence and will love being underdogs. Again, they're, they're difficult to play against, difficult to, to beat, but they've got some real quality as well. I mean, I obviously watched Hoiberg a lot at Spurs um, this year and he's been probably the player of the season. Yeah, of course, you've got Harry Kane and Sonny doing the business up top, but Hoiberg <laughs> has been the sign of the season for me. So it's a, it's a tough, tough game for England, but in a semi-final, if you play against Denmark at home at Wembley, uh, you'd probably take that before the tournament started. Now to that, Darren, Wembley will have like 60,000 fans, I believe, for the first time. So it's going to be a packed stadium. Um, but with that said, you mentioned Ericsson. So how much of the emotional factor is, is it going to play in for the Danish when they go out there and play against England? How much is that yeah, going to affect? Yeah, I think affect? the emotion, it has to play a massive part. Uh, I think we see every, every game now that, you know, the team they're playing against has a you know Christian Christian shirt of their own nation signed by their team I mean it's, a, it's such a lovely touch um, that they have really risen to the the occasion and the challenge that was thrown at them for you know such a, an awful incident they've um, they could have gone either way they could have said uh, use it as an excuse that in order to not go forward. They've used it as an excuse to go forward and they've been different class. Um, 
honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that they were playing against England, I would be <laughs> supporting them. I want them to do so well. Uh, and they have. So uh, a semi-final for them is, is great stuff. And, uh, <laughs> we'll stop it there. <laughs> that, that'll do. <laughs> the, the, the sympathy, the sympathy doesn't extend to, uh, to no, Ukraine. No. So, England against Ukraine. I mean, I, I have to say we're we're here watching it at, at, at three o'clock in the morning, and, and it makes getting up at three o'clock in the morning worthwhile when you see a, a performance like that. And, oh. and as a Spurs fan, seeing Harry Kane uh, coming back to form the way he came back to form, what what do you think? What do you think's happening with? With Kane here, you know he, he he struggled a bit the first couple of games, but now he he seems to have come to life. Bam. Well, I think that people that the last game the the team created chances and created chances for Harry. The first few games they didn't, and that's the reality of it. I think that to hear that people are saying, "Oh, should Harry Kane play?" is absolutely ludicrous. He's the best striker best striker in the world. Uh, he's more than a goal scorer. He's a leader. He links the play. He does everything. Harry Kane was just part of some performances that actually weren't that great in the early days of the tournament, the first three, three games. And that's that's it. And the person to suffer the most was Harry because he's a centre forward who thrives on goals, chances, attacking football. Uh, England weren't really playing that. And it wasn't until, you know, their second second goal against Ukraine where we really just saw England just go out and play and it was different class and that's what we all want to see we all want to see winning football as well but um, the Ukraine game was the one that obviously has now made everyone really believe that yeah this is a team that can do it all not just be dogged and defensive and solid uh, and win games with clean sheets but just to go out and and batter teams I mean we've got so much talent so um, Harry Kane great so pleased for him Deserves it. He's a fantastic yeah. footballer, a great guy, and anything that was said about him in a negative way was, for me, unjustified. Now, Darren, there's been loads of like photos on social media of some England players, you know, just having fun. We, we saw Saka on a unicorn. He's just like wearing Marcus Rashford Apparently, shorts. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, the vibes, the players are so happy, right? How, how, how do you think this factors into the team spirit? Are they really confident now, you know, that, that they can go all the way to the finals? Is this really, you know? Yeah, I think that they're, they're, they're com- so they've got to be so confident. Of course, the draw opened up for them and to play Ukraine in the quarterfinal was fantastic. Germany was always going to be a tough, tough game, but at Wembley with fans now and, you know, not the best German team we've ever seen. So the confidence within that squad, you can see. And I feel like, you know, we've seen England squads over the past decade or two that have got so much talent but you can tell that they're not a team and that's what stopped them from succeeding gareth southgate is a fantastic coach part of some obviously some great squads that i was you know available involved with as well and the biggest thing about those squads were that euro 96 for us was team bonding uh more of a club environment not individuals not no, no e- egos put to the side and that's what you can see with this group this is like a club group um, a club team that you know they all get on they're all young and they've all come up through the systems together and they enjoy being around each other and you need that because it's a long time they're probably together you know once they get hopefully to the final it will be four to in five or six weeks that they would have been together it's a long time to be stuck in hotels and that sort of thing so um, you've got to get on, you've got to like being around your teammates. And that's what, what you've seen, what we've all seen. And that's what Gareth has pr- produced and made sure has happened within that bunch of players. So, so you talked a little bit there about Euro 96. And when we talk about team spirit, I mean, I, I, I remember in the run up to that tournament, again, a similar situation. The press were getting on the team a little bit. There was a famous uh, incident in Hong Kong. And then the first game, only the draw against Switzerland, yeah. against Scotland. It took a while really to get started. And then, of course, Gaza's goal really kind of sparked things off. And, and very, again, very similar. You suddenly had a sense that the team were together in the way that they celebrated and, and the way that things were going around. I mean, what's your biggest memories of, of Euro 96 and playing in a European Championship semi final at Wembley? Well, I mean, Euro '96 is obviously one of the you know the best tournaments for me to be involved in. Uh, the, 
so many similarities with this because obviously it was in England and at Wembley and all the games and apart from the Ukraine game, you know, every game that England will play will be at Wembley. Now there's fans. Yes, a slow start to the tournament. Um, a game, you know, I think our game against Switzerland, we got vilified for because of how we prepared for the tournament and as I say, being out in the Hong Kong and that sort of thing. England, the performance against Scotland, nowhere near good enough a team that they should obviously beat and beat comfortably. So, of course, that, that there comes that stick again. And, and that's what, you know, comes with playing in England. You, you accept the rough with the smooth. And if you play well, they'll tell you. And if you don't, they'll, they'll tell you even more. So, um, and then for us, the Gaza goal is the moment of the tournament that everything changes because that goal and that win gave us the confidence that we could go on and win, hopefully win the tournament and play as we all knew that we could and as Terry Venables knew we could. And because of that, the next game against Holland was the performance of the tournament for us and, you know, the, one of the most, best performances from an England team in many, many years. So um, I feel like there's a similarity with what happened against Ukraine. It's, you know, you've seen some good dogged performances and now you've seen them let loose. And now they're ready and they can do everything. Um, of course, playing the semi-final is the, you know, such a huge game, uh, so so tense. But being part of these games is why you play football at Wembley, under the lights, full house. And this is, I mean, it, it ended very poorly for us. But I will always remember it just being as a classic game of football, which we played great and just didn't get the luck that we needed to win, to win the game. Hopefully England get that against Denmark. So you, you talked about the Netherlands game and we've actually got some of the gear right here in the studio in Singapore that, that Paul Gascoigne wore in that game. We've got his boots, his, his shorts and, and, and his socks from that in, incredible performance uh, right, right here in Singapore. Um, it, it was a great memory for me, but obviously the semi-final was where it didn't quite go to plan, right? I mean, Ash, yeah. I mean, the, the, the overriding memory is how close England came. Yeah, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, that missed golden goal as well. I mean, how... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Inches. Yeah, inches. inches. <laughs> yeah. How, what, what do you It was make, one of those games. Yeah. I, mean, Germany, I mean, we played so well on the night, and I think people always forget about that. People, of course, always remember results, and that's what it's all about. And we obviously... we. We wanted to win the tournament, so we failed, and um, it felt pretty awful. Um, to lose on penalties is the worst way you can lose any game of football, let alone a Euro European Championship semi-final. When we played so well on the night, um, I hit the inside the post, so I'm in. She's I'm probably in too early. Gaz is then not yeah. in far enough, and uh, he waits, <laughs> thinking that the goal is going to get it. I mean. It was just not meant to be. Gaz is, you know, it's it's literally a stud away from, you know, putting us through. I'm, you know, an inch away from putting us through and goal, what would have been the first ever golden goal uh, and would have put us through to the final. So, of course, you always think about the little moments within these games that that change everything. I mean, we see it every week now with VAR and everything else that all these teams, they're so close in quality and technique that, you know, it always comes down to one or two moments within within these huge, huge games. And unfortunately for us, they went the wrong way. Yeah, I mean, uh, say as an England fan, I remember we, even back to 1990, the, the World Cup semi-final when Chris Waddle shot from the halfway line um, in, in the extra time and, and, and so close to a goal that, that just changes everything. And, and it's always yeah. said that, it, you know, England have always, I, I watched an interview with Bobby Robson and Gary Lineker the other day that England were absolutely confident they would have won that World Cup if they got through. And I'm sure you would say the same about a final against the, the Czech Republic in 1996. So I have to ask you the question, Darren. I've been annoying the life out of everyone here for the last ah. couple of weeks singing, singing this song. So, Darren, is ah. it coming home? <laughs> 100%. I think it, uh, yes. <laughs> everything is set up for a perfect week. Let's let's go. Great. We're playing some great stuff now and it's, uh, it's a great, great opportunity. But uh, I think it'll be, if we can get there, it'll be a classic final against either Italy or Spain. But I think it'll be Italy. Perfect. Fantastic. I like that prediction. So, Darren, thank you very much yeah, for taking so time much, out of your schedule yeah. and and out of your baby feeding, I think is, is <laughs> Good man, I appreciate it. <laughs> and again, stay safe, stay well, and we'll hear from you, you again too. soon. Take care. Take Thank care. you. Nice to see you guys.
Let's have a look now at our pundits' predictions for this week. Big games in the semi-finals. As you all can see, um, only me and Duric have predicted Denmark will be beating England. However, the rest of the team are all for England. Also, I've, I have to admit that everyone's going for Italy this week. But given how you know upsetting the Euros are, we don't know whether you know they might come through this week. But if they were to lose, it's going to be a huge upset for our pundits. So now moving on as well to our you know jersey giveaway of the week. If you all fancy yourself winning you know or, or predicting a game, please take part in this week's um, jersey contest. Either a Spanish or Italian jersey, we're giving that out. All you have to do is to answer the question at the bottom, or rather predict the latest goal scorer. And this doesn't include penalties, by the way. So leave your answer in the post, a separate post in this page right now, and we'll be waiting for your answers, right, James? Yep, great chance to win a jersey, so get in there, separate post, go find it right now, get your answer in, as I said, doesn't include penalty shootouts, and get it in before kickoff tonight, one entry only. Now we're going back to OTH, and we have our seventh male challenger in the SPL skills competition. It's getting hot down there, let's go over to the stadium. I think i looking forward to the penalty challenge because I have never played against Liner and I think this is the best time for me to show my penalty skills. Yeah. Second question, which Euro team do you have to uh, I think I'll go with France uh, because the next question that you're going to ask me is I'm really really looking forward uh, to watch Kante play and I think he deserves to win the Ballon d'Or, so yeah. I think my favourite was the one-on-one -on -one challenge with Liner because I have never played striker in my entire life and it feels like I, uh, I'm a striker that period of time but like I said, I enjoy playing uh, against Liner and it's been a while I see him play and I say that's the, one of the best challenges. Yeah. Thanks Rahan. We can see the table here and Amarildin from Lion City Sailors is still leading but we have one more player and it's the SPL top scorer Tomoyuki Doi on next week's show. As we always love to do on this show, we are giving away two exclusive jerseys this week. Some fantastic ones, legends of the game. It's all crumpled now as you all can see but of course we have one of the biggest stars of Italian football, Giorgio Cellini, signed jersey right here to give away. We also have one of the legends of the German football game, of course, we have Miroslav Klose. All you have to do is to stay tuned until the end of this show because we're going to draw out the winners of this fantastic jersey. Now, of course, we are here, joined the studio by one of the big players yeah. from Singapore football team. We have Del Winder Singh of Tanjung Pagar. Welcome to the show, Del Winder. How's Thank the season you. been so far and tell us what you've been up to? Um, season hasn't been as ideal as we thought uh, at the start of the season, but um, we have been working hard in training. Uh, 
this break has done as well. Uh, we've got the technical staff, the coaches have um, given us a plan and we've, we've been working hard towards it. So I, I'm sure that we can carry it out in the second phase of the season and climb out the table. Fantastic. Yeah. So are we going to get a Singapore winner of the SPL this season? Uh, well, we have to ask this to everyone, <laughs> right? I mean, we need a Singapore winner, right? Well, uh, hopefully. I think it's tight at the top. Just, uh, if I'm not wrong, a point apart. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Lion City looks really strong. And plus, you know, with Harris now, the addition of Harris, they're even stronger. So definitely, we, we really want a Singapore team to win as well. It's been quite a while. So you're tipping LCS, yeah? Uh, yeah, go with LCS. Because okay. you know, last game of the last season, could have been an opportunity to be a little bit kelong and, and <laughs> <laughs> for a few teams, but it didn't quite play out that way, right? So, I, I, you know, everyone said they want to help the Singapore team. No one helped the Singapore team, right? So yeah. make sure if it comes to it, you know, that we all, <laughs> we all help out our brothers. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> you got you here to talk about fantasy football. Yep. And let's have a look. Let's have a look at your team. How are you doing so far? Um, well, I've gone with, uh, I've changed my team a bit. I've gone with uh, more of the English and Italian players because mm -hmm. I guess the final will be That's between these two. For, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I've put a couple of English players on the bench uh, because, as you know, Italy, Italy and uh, Spain are playing first. So uh, I might change around after the first game. But yeah, I think it's uh, why these players, I think they have been standout performers for me in their own respective teams. Um, you can see the two rock at the back for Italy, Bonucci and Cellini. Uh, I think they've been great. Luke Shaw has been tremendous this tournament as well. Um, yeah, and the rest as well. You know, so I think it's a fairly performing team, I would say. You, you yeah. can, we can tell you're a centre-back, right? You put <laughs> yeah. your Stones, Cellini, Bonucci, yeah. even Walker playing centre-back at the moment. You're really loaded. Loaded mm -hmm. your team with centre backs. Yeah, defensive solidity. I like that. Yeah. But it's interesting what you're talking about there in terms of trying. To, we're all spent this week trying to guess yeah. Yeah. who's going to win oh. these games because if you put in too many players from, let's say, you pick Italy and England, and Italy and England lose, and the final is Spain against Denmark, Ooh. you're going to end. You probably going to end up not having many players. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we have a big problem for right? that. So, so yeah. everyone's going through this kind of dilemma of getting that, yeah. that balance right now. Yeah? Okay. Who stands out to you in this team, Ash? You've got a few of these players, right? Yeah, obviously, Insigne, his goal was fantastic yeah. in the last game. Um, I mean, Donnarumma was also my choice of goalkeeper because he's been also like a lot of clean sheets. In fact, even Pickford has been fantastic, clean sheets for England. So it's a bit tough. I think he's got great um, in the defence line here. But I'm interested why you chose Dolberg um, up there. Is there, is there a reason why? Like, um, has he impressed you as a... Um, yeah, I think he's been doing well for Denmark. You know, yeah. like um, no one would, I guess, predict him to be a stand-up performer for Denmark as well, mm. you know, so yeah, it's a surprising choice, but yeah, I think against, uh, in their next game, he's one to look out for. Absolutely. That's just in case Denmark do beat England, you have at least <laughs> one player <laughs> yeah. in the final, right? No, Dolberg's interesting because like you say, he's kind of come a little bit caught people by surprise. Yeah. People look at Braithwaite a lot of the time. Yeah. The other one in the Danish team that's really got attention, of course, is Damsgaard. And Damsgaard, mm -hmm. he's only, what, 21. He's really only in the team because Ericsson is, is out. Yeah. But he's, he's helping make, make play. I mean, as a centre-back, you look at Immobile and you look at Dolberg, very different players, right? Yeah. Which one would you rather play against? Whoa. Tough one. <laughs> Tough one, yeah. Because it's, it's very different styles, right? Do you like a, do you like a big man who's going to get physical and and kind of stand you up or, or, or would you rather play against someone who's maybe a little bit faster and going to play in front of you a little um, bit and maybe run the channels? I think, yeah, faster, quicker, it's a bit of a problem Not for us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, they're, they're keeping us on our toes most mm. of the time. Yeah. So I'd rather play a bigger player, stronger player, even though you have to be mentally strong against these stronger players, yeah. but at least they 
yeah, you keep them in front of you. So you like the honest players, not yeah. the sneaky, oh. yeah. fast players. <laughs> yeah, I think they're a handful to, you know, you really different. Mark, you kick them early doors <laughs> and, and get it over with, right? Yeah. So let's have a look at Ash's oh. team. And there is Braithwaite. Getting That's Braithwaite right. in early doors, okay. Uh, more Spanish players here. I mean, I had to, you know, shout out to my Spanish like bros while watching this show. I mean, honestly, I underestimated them, you know, in this tournament. I think against Switzerland, they were a little bit lucky, I have to say, mm. with that penalty kick. In fact, the, the Swiss goalkeeper was outstanding summer. Okay. So, to be able to get this far is actually, I guess, like a luck for them. Uh, but with that said, I added Insigne again. Uh, I still have a lot of faith in Locatelli. I want him to win, um, you know, what is that, the, the, high, the most number of goals. Golden boot. Golden boot, that's it. He needs... A f he needs Quite a few though, he needs about four. Yeah, he needs four. like three. <laughs> but you see, I got Immo Immobili there and I yeah. didn't really like his... Uh, he, he was doing some show acting right in the last game as well. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, so we, we saw that earlier on, that nice bit of... Uh, you don't get bonus points for that. Yeah, honestly. exactly. But I did have to use my wild card. So it was, this was the week I used my wild card. So okay. yeah, okay. I mean, to be honest. But you know what? I wanted to add in more English players. For some reason, I wasn't able to. Like Luke Shaw as well. I. I, I, he's on my bench because, I, like, like you, I'm very impressed by him. Uh. Mm. But I decided to just go with this for the match day one first. But, <laughs> so whoever wins Italy or Spain, you're gonna need about five or six subs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know what? Um, I'm quite happy that Pickford is in my team and, yeah. and Stones as well. Like, yeah. I think everybody, everybody this week, you know, there's there's yeah, really only four what? goalkeepers yeah. you can pick, and anybody is gonna pick one from the first game. And I think everyone will pick Donnarumma, <laughs> given yeah, the choice yeah. after seeing Spain can see quite a few goals. And then yep. you need to pick either Pickford or Schmeichel for the second game, right? So Absolutely. everyone will have some variation on, on that as yeah. well, yeah? Let's so, see your team, So this James. is my team. Of course, the man himself. I, I, sc I, I, I <laughs> kept faith with Harry Kane. I even captained him. It's paid off. Um, and, and Sterling in there as well. Yep. So I've really tried to balance the team out here. I've even put in a couple of Danes, even though they're going to lose. Um, but you know, oh. I had to I had to put them in there anyway, just in, just in case on the off chance the referees came along or whatever. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> and then I tried to balance the the Italy and and Spain. So if I've done my maths right, as as long as uh, as long as England and and Italy don't both lose, I should be okay on transfers. You should be cool, huh? One way or another. But uh, say I I I've spent a bit more. I noticed both of you guys didn't spend quite so much on the forward line, a bit more in the midfielders and defence. Yep. I'm still gone relatively expensive in my forward line here with Kane, but I, I went Belotti. He hasn't scored yet. Yep. He hasn't done a lot yet. I just have a feeling something is coming okay. for him. That and the fact I didn't have enough money left for Immobile. I knew it. Well, why is Morata <laughs> there though? Because if anybody is going to score for Spain, it's Morata. No, but he's been missing quite a few sitters though. So had Kane. There comes okay, a so, moment. Okay, so it's, it's the combination <laughs> of the comeback king here. Is that, is that what I, you're going I'm, with? I'm trying to outmaneuver the other players in the game by picking people <laughs> that no one else is, is picking. But, but good, good, good segue here, right? <laughs> so we look at the golden boot, and, yep. and basically the people in red are the people that are still alive right now. So if the competition ended tomorrow, Ronaldo would win. Yes, Ronaldo and Sheik both have five, but the first tiebreaker is assists. And you can see hardly anyone up here has any assists at the moment, only three of them. And then the second tiebreaker is minutes played. So even if Sterling uh, were to get to five goals, unless he can get another assist, he, he would still lose to Ronaldo. So realistically, Sterling, Dolberg, Kane, they need three goals, possibly only two with an assist. All these players at the bottom, all the Italian players, the Spanish players, the, the Danish players at the bottom there, they've only got two. Yeah, I've noticed So they need well, three, yeah. maybe four goals yeah. to catch up. So Ronaldo is uh, hanging in there. So what do you think, though, Winda? Who's going for the golden boot here? Mm, tough fight, I'd say. Um, as of now, yeah, clearly Ronaldo. But I think after the past two games, Harry Kane did Ooh. prove his worth. So he, right might, right he, might, yeah, he might surprise okay. everyone. But no. tough games, right? You know, tough we, games, you know, yeah. we asked this question in the IG last week when Kane had like nothing, uh, just after the Germany game, and someone went, "Kane's gonna win it," and we were like, "Oh!" And then he said, "Yeah, he'll score a hat trick against the Ukraine," and and, and the the guy was nearly right. Yeah. Whoever that was, yeah. you know, credit. Yeah. Um, he has kind of come out of come out of nowhere, yeah. and of course, he takes the penalties. Yeah. Um, yeah. Although England haven't had a penalty yet, but he does take the penalties if it if it comes to that, which is not the case for. 
for Sterling or, or Dolberg as Dolberg, well. Yeah. And, and Dawinda, you, you mentioned Cellini and Bonucci. Are they your kind of standout defenders from the tournament so far? Yeah, definitely. After the last game um, against Belgium, I think they really kept Lukaku very quiet in the game. And, um, you know, as much as people want to say, like, you know, or oh, there's other defenders who have been the standout, but I think these two players, you know, combine each of 70, but yeah. they are really showing the younger ones yeah. how, it's, how, it, how the way it's supposed to be done. The, the funny thing is everyone's talking about, was talking about Belgium yeah. and saying great going forward, but their defenders are very old. Yeah. <laughs> no one was saying that about Chiellini yeah, and, yeah. and Bonucci. Yeah. Everyone was saying Belgium will lose at some point because their defense is too old. But Italy, no one has, has commented yeah. on that. I mean, do you, do you think the, the experience yeah, I, is, is the key here? I or? think that's, that was what I wanted to say. I think the experience between both of them, they've been teammates for a long, long time as compared to the Belgium centre-backs like Vertonga and, and etc. So, yeah, I think really these two players, for me, you know, they have been the rock for Italy, really being the leaders in the team and really bringing this team forward. So, yeah. To and, and surprising for an Italian team, no red cards. Yeah. Yet yeah. either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but true. Spinozola will be a, will be a big miss yeah. for them loss, as yeah. well, right? And not just defensively, but, but attacking-wise as well. Yeah. And the player of the tournament for you so far? Um, I had a hard choice for this, but I would go with the one in my fantasy team, Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think he really surprised me in this tournament. He's had a, a pass, a tough past couple of years, mm -hmm. like after the leg break, he wasn't really in favour. Mm -hmm. But um, I think maybe personally as me, uh, for me as a player, I think the mentality that he had to come back, to strive back and really fight for his place, uh, is really evident of what he's been doing. And it's not just uh, once in, like a couple of months kind of uh, wonder, like he's just there yeah. and then he's off. You know, so um, he's done well for Menu at mm -hmm. the end. Even though I'm not a Man U supporter, but I still do, have do you to support a Liverpool. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> so yeah, but I think he's really impressed me. And even in the last game, to assist, his mm -hmm. numbers, his figures don't lie as well in terms yeah. of accuracy in yeah. passes and etc. So, yeah, I think really standout performer for me. I think he's second in the assist table right now. So then I have yeah. to ask you the question Luke Shaw or John Robertson? Andy Robertson. Andy Robertson, sorry, yeah. I was thinking as a Scotland John Robertson. Yeah, uh, Andy Robertson. Luke Shaw or Andy Robertson? Based on current form, Luke Shaw. Oh, it's very objective, huh? Yeah, we're based gonna get, on current You're going to get hate posts from the <laughs> Liverpool fans. <laughs> no, no, yeah, as, in, as in Robertson <laughs> has been great, you know, when yeah. he was at his tip top, when Liverpool won the season, he was really, yeah. you know, up, yeah. down. I Sometimes I wonder as a player, like, how, how can he do this in games, you know? It was really 90 minutes up and down. Yeah. But, yeah, if you were to ask me currently, at this rate, yeah, maybe because Andy Robertson is out, but yeah, I think the mm. past few games really did okay. look sure a fair bit. Okay, so just before we wrap up, just a reminder, those of you playing in our Fantasy League, a big fall from grace for Tayo Cruz all the way down to number seven this week. I think he must have captained the wrong person or not done his subs because uh, something went wrong. Everybody else was in the 60s, 70s, 80s. A couple of new players appearing there between number seven and number ten and a new leader at the top of the table. So with just two rounds left to go, it's starting to take shape. Ash and I and Dawinda are still not... Um, we don't see ourselves. We're yet. making a late <laughs> surge. <laughs> we'll, we'll, hang on. we'll hang on for that one. So thank you for joining us, Dawinda. Thank you so we thank are going to go back to OTH for the latest Ladies Skills Challenger, and it's Radha. So off we go. So Radha, which challenge are you most looking forward to here? 1v1 with Mira and free kick. Okay, let's see how you do with those, right? So, who's going to win the European Championship? England. I admire your optimism, I like that. And which player are you most looking forward to seeing play? Rashford. Okay, good shout. So, good luck Radha, go get him. Thank you.
So how did that go? It was pretty alright. What was the what was the highlight for you? I think it was the um, crossbar challenge. Yeah, you're the first player so far, male or female, to get two out of three on the crossbar challenge. And I can tell you, you scored 60 points, which puts you joint level at the top of the leaderboard. But you know what? You got 48 on the keepy offy. If you had done two more touches, you would be in the lead. How does that make you feel? Um, I feel like I could do it a little bit better. So there's only one lady left. It's the legend, Charmaine. You fancy your chances still? Pretty, yeah, uh, pretty solid. Confident? Okay. okay, thanks for coming down. Good job, Radha. Thank you. Hey, so welcome back and another fantastic ladies challenge there. And now Radha is joint top of the table with Ernie. So we have shared leaders with only one lady left to go next week, but it is the legend Charmaine Lim next wow. week out of retirement to take part in the skills challenge. So we'll see if Ernie, uh, we'll see if Ernie and Radha hold on to the lead. But talking of challenges, we have the quiz challenge and it's Ash again this week uh, seeking to regain her her title after last week's the defeat to Jaidi. She so far she's won one and lost two so we're trying to break even a little bit here. For I'll Ash, try. We have a challenger this week we have our first lady challenger we have Victoria. Hi Victoria. Welcome Victoria. Hi. I'm so happy to have all So female. tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? I'm currently working as a physiotherapist assistant at Alexandra Hospital. Wow. And I currently support England. Wow! So, so, so I, I, I have Why? to ask you this Why question you completely not knowing what your answer will be. So, Victoria, who's going to win the European Championships, Victoria? England. There's no, you can't argue with that, can you? There we go. All right. So, nice and easy. So, you know the drill, Victoria. So, which envelope would you like? Envelope A or envelope B? Mm, B. B, which means Ash is going to go first. Our topic this I week... I get so worried when I... Yeah, the, it's nervous right from the start, right? Yeah. So our topic this week is underdogs and upsets in Did European Championship this, history. Way, yeah, these questions were written by me. Oh, All of Ash's God. questions may, are written by me. May, may, may I just leave? My questions no. are written by Ash. She hasn't seen them. She has no idea what's coming, as you probably saw last week. So here we go. A. Let's go. Question number one. North Macedonia was one of two teams making their first <laughs> you, European Championships appearance this tournament. North Macedonia was one of two teams making their first Euro Champs appearance this tournament. Who was the other? Um, um, wait, I'm looking at the... <laughs> we, we have a tournament chart in the side of the room here and she's currently studying the tournament chart looking for a name. <laughs> um, was it? It can't be my team, right? It was the team that I was supporting early in the. Spain, Italy, no. Not Turkey, right? Gonna have to rush you here. Okay, I'm just gonna go with Turkey. I don't think it's your first time, yeah. Not Turkey, Victoria. Any idea? Which team besides North Macedonia made their first ever European Championships appearance this year? This year. Mm -hmm. Um, England. <laughs> oh, it was Finland. Oh, interesting. Finland with their first ever appearance, but I it's okay. So we go to Victoria. Question one. Which underdog knocked out Belgium 3-1 in Euro 2016 on their way to a semi-final appearance? Which underdog knocked out Belgium 3-1 on their way to a semi-final appearance at Euro 2016. Any idea? Mm. They had a good run. Th they had a good run this tournament as well. A good run, is there, Hin? <laughs> Italy? Not Italy. Any idea, Ash? Who uh. knocked out Belgium in Euro 2016? I wish I knew this. Uh... I wish I knew this. <laughs> Spain? It was your Welshies. Oh! Wales knocked out Belgium. So still nil-nil. Oh yeah, I remember they had that upset game, yeah. Yeah, second question for Ash. Ash, which underdog won the 2004 European Championships 
despite being 150 to 1 outsiders at the start of the tournament. You know, I really love the country, but I hated this Euros. It was Greece. It was Greece. Ash takes the lead, 1 to 0. Victoria, back to you. This may be before you were born, but we'll, we'll have a go anyway. <laughs> Denmark won the 1992 European Championships, despite not qualifying for the European Championships. Which nation dropped out of the competition and Denmark took their place? It's a country that ceased to exist. So basically, 1992, uh, Eastern Europe <laughs> falls down. So I'll give you three options. Option A, Soviet Union. B, Yugoslavia. Or C, Czechoslovakia. Which country dropped out of the 1992 European Championships and Denmark took their place? Is C? It's not C. It's B, Yugoslavia. It's okay. Before you were born. Before you were born. Before you were born. It's okay. Question three for Ash here. Before you were born. No, I, in, I don't. <laughs> in Euro 1988. Oh, okay. England lost all three group games. They lost to both the eventual finalists, Russia and the Netherlands, but they also lost to which underdog side? Was it A, Scotland, B, Ireland, or C, Wales? It was Ireland? It was Ireland. Beat England 1 0. Ray Houghton. So it's 2 to 0 to Ray. Ash. Victoria, you need this one. Vamos, Victoria. Vamos. This it's may, coming home. It's coming home, babe. This one may involve guesswork here. Yeah. <laughs> Who held Germany to a famous nil-nil draw on their only European Championships appearance in 2004? Was it A, Latvia, <laughs> B, Lithuania, or C, Estonia? Who drew nil-nil with Germany in their only European Championships appearance in 2004? A, Latvia, B, Lithuania, or C, Estonia? Go with A. Go with A, there's a good guess, I like that. It was A, Latvia. Good job, good job. Two to one. <laughs> nice. Back to Ash. So Ash, who was the lowest ranked team at this European Championships 2020 in the FIFA rankings. Who's the lowest ranked team? Was it A, Northern Macedonia, B, Finland, or C, Hungary? I think it was Macedonia. It was Northern Macedonia, yes, yeah. ranked number 62. Where is Singapore ranked again? 162. <laughs> Question four for Victoria. Staying on North Macedonia, they have one Premier League player. What is if you and North in their ranks? I'm a, I'm a firm supporter of separatism. <laughs> <laughs> they have like one the Premier League player in their ranks, Alioski. Ezgian Alioski. <laughs> Which Premier League club does Alioski play for? They were a bit of a, a bit of an underdog upset Premier League team this season as well. Any idea which Premier League team? does Alioski play for? They play in white. Who? White? A white Premier League team. I think Ash knows the answer. No, I don't know. I'm just <laughs> no, like okay. going with You're it. just celebrating that Victoria doesn't know the answer. Okay. No! <laughs> Leeds. Leeds. It is Leeds! It is yes! Leeds. We're still in it. Victoria's still in it. Three to two. Vamos! Oh, here we go, here we go. How many questions left? Unfortunately, I'm 99% certain Ash does know this one. Who knocked out England in Euro 2016? I answered this before in a previous quiz. It was Iceland. It was Iceland, yes. <laughs> Victoria, your last question. Which underdog team lost the Euro 1996 final to the tournament's first ever golden goal? Was it A, Czech Republic? Was it B, Scotland, or was it C, Croatia? Which team lost the Euro 1996 final to the tournament's first ever golden goal? They lost to Germany. A, Czech Republic, B, Scotland, C, Croatia. E? It was A, Czech Republic. <laughs> 
so Victoria has three points, but Ash has four. Oh, wow. That was close. Oh, good game, Victoria. Good effort, Victoria. Good, good game. effort. I like that. Those were. I, I do apologize for questions from before you were born. From North Macedonia, and, guys. Uh, and, and our North Macedonian fan base will have enjoyed those questions. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in all the way from Europe. We appreciate that. <laughs> so thank you very much, Victoria. <laughs> Nobody goes home empty-handed. We do have some great Euro 2020 good away giveaways for you. And, uh, of course, we'll all be celebrating when England win the final in six days' time, all right? Absolutely. So thank you for taking part, Victoria. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. And now it's the moment you've been waiting for. We're going to be announcing the winner of the Giorgio Cellini shirt. Signed jersey, of course. Very beautiful legend of the Italian game. So, James, let's get down to it. Do a little bit of a shake to see, you know, like... So, so that was the question, right? Yeah, At which was club did Cellini start his career? What was the answer, Ash? The answer was Livorno. <laughs> Very Italian, yeah. So we have all the right answers in here. We had hundreds and hundreds. hundreds. Thank you so much, you guys, for Ooh, all I your can participation. See, yeah. I can see Alvin Tan. Ooh, I can Alvin see Mandy Tan. Ong. Wow. Michelle Sim. Ooh, There's a lot of ladies win. in here today. Yeah, lots of ladies. I know okay. why you all like the so Italianos. Let's give it a good shuffle before Ash is going to pull out the name. Fingers crossed, guys. Close your it's eyes. all about luck. So, right. so the winner. <laughs> all right. The winner is. I can't believe it. <laughs> oh, again. It is. It it's is, Ravi. It's Ravi. R V O three. And Ravi by the way, who, Ravi who got beaten badly in a quiz. So this is, you know, this is not not bad compensation. Not bad. And Ravi. he is an Italian fan, right? Congratulations, Ravi. Congratulations, Ravi. And then we have. Yeah. For those of you that didn't win, you can still win. We're giving away right now a Miroslav Klose signed jersey. What you have to do is in the comments to this video, in yep. before 8 p.m. tomorrow night, answer this question: How many goals? did Klose score for Germany in his international career? How many goals did Klose score for Germany? Get your answers in the video comments. One answer per person, please, <laughs> by Wednesday, 8 yeah. p.m. If you yeah. put more than once, we will only take your first answer, okay? No duplicate entries. So, another show. Absolutely, One it's our go. final show. Can't believe it, right? Euros have really passed by this month, and what a great month. And that's why we want to also treat you guys to some fantastic guests joining us for our finale. Of course, we are joined by Singapore captain and LCS star Harris Harun will be in the house to share his Euro final predictions. And we have another Singapore legend, Aidy Iskander will be here talking us through what happened in the semi-finals and what happened in the final. That's right. And we also have a Singapore tennis star, Shahid Alam, in the house. I heard he's a big football fan. So he is a be. massive football fan, so he'll be talking us through fantasy football. And we have more giveaways than you can shake oh, a stick at. We're giving away a pair of boots signed by Kylian Ooh. Mbappe, a pair of gloves signed by Donnarumma. What else we got, Ash? <laughs> We've got, wow, he's just retired from Germany and I feel so honoured that we are going to be giving away a signed Tony Cruz jersey from Real Madrid. Wow. We also also have Thomas Muller signed jersey from Bayern Munich. Great legends of the game. And that's not all. We have a lot so more to more. give away. And we have some mystery guests we haven't even told you about yet yeah. that will blow your mind. It's Sunday, 8 p.m. right here on our Facebook page. But remember, before we say goodnight, Italy versus Spain. Get your predictions in the last goal scorer thread, separate thread, right now. And get your answers for the Miroslav Closer competition in the comments to this video. Another show done, Ash. One more to go. One more to go, yes. Thank you so much for all your support once again. Gracias a todos. Nos vemos, guys. See ya.